Welcome to the Rich TV Live podcast. I'm your host, Richard D'Souza, and I'm here with my very special guest, the CEO of European Energy Metals Corp, Jeremy Poirier. How are you doing today, Jeremy? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Now, what are some reasons why investors should pay attention now and put European energy metal stock on their radar? Um, I, th- I think the uh, the main reason uh, is, is that we have some very exciting results, which we actually released today. Um, you know, it's a pretty significant lithium discovery uh, in Finland. Um, and if you if you take a look at our market cap, um, we're around 10 million Canadian. And you look at some of our comparables as they've rolled out some of their results uh, and they trade in, in the, uh, the hundreds of millions um, market cap. So um, I think that, you know, we may we may see a re-rating on the stock here uh, very shortly. Um, and also, uh, the project's located, uh, d- part of it's located uh, directly adjacent to um, lithium mine that's actually being built in central Finland. Um, and that's being built by Sabine Stillwater. And they're spending 600 million euros, uh, and that's expected to come online in the back half of 2025. So, um, you know, you have a, a project that uh, similar geology and is quite uh, close to a, a mine that's being built. Um, and then you have a lot of significant results coming out here from our uh, our our uh, recently completed exploration program. That sounds fantastic. Now, I want to bring your attention to the symbols. In Canada, the symbol is F-I-N. In America, the symbol is E-U-E-M-F. Now, my next question, Jeremy, is how does European energy metals differentiate from other metal plays? I think in this environment, um, it's it's a little bit more difficult to access capital. So we've actually completed a couple of uh, pretty substantial capital raises, and we have over three million in the bank and another million of in the money warrants. So we don't have to go back to market for any money uh, in the near term, uh, which I think is significant uh, because again, it is a as it is a tough capital raising environment, uh, and then we're fully funded for our exploration plan uh, next year to hopefully uh, capitalize on a potential discovery here. Great to see a company with money in the bank. Obviously, our investors love to take a look at companies that are well-funded. Can you talk about your previous success in the lithium exploration industry? Yeah, I've had a couple of uh, uh, of exits. Uh, most recently, our, we had a project in Chile that we spent about $60 million on. We advanced it to a definitive feasibility study, which is as far as you can take a mining project until they, they build it. And it sold to Cadelco, which is one of the world's largest copper companies, uh, for over 200 million US. Um, and then before that, we actually had a project in Nevada uh, that sold to Schlumberger, one of the largest oil and gas companies in the world. So, um, you know, I understand the lithium game. I've been doing this for eight years, uh, and we've had success in it, and we're hoping to, you know, do it for a third time. We love to see that success, and I'm sure you will do it for a third time. What are the biggest factors making the energy metals market so attractive in 2024 and beyond? Uh, you know, I think as central banks um, ease uh, this interest rate cycle that they're they're working on, uh, you'll see um, people starting to purchase new vehicles again, uh, and a large chunk of that will be uh, electric vehicles. And I think uh, as that happens, you'll see the uh, the price continue to move higher. Um, you know, not to mention, obviously, everybody's using more cell phones, more batteries, and then you have the battery storage component uh, for the clean energy movement. So, um, you know, there's uh, lithium's needed in all of these batteries. Uh, it's a, choir, a requirement for the decarbonization of, of the planet, um, and and there's no doubt that uh, um, we you know we have a lack of uh, of supply uh, coming on over the next few years. We agree 100%. EVs is a growing sector, and lithium is one of the key elements in electric vehicles. Do you see a demand for energy metals continuing to remain strong for the foreseeable future? I do. This is a long term trend, and it's not just with lithium, but I think that's one of the main ones. But you know, if you're going to decarbonize the planet, if you're going to move to to clean energy sources, um, you know, whether that be you know wind, solar, nuclear, um, you know, lithium is going to be a key part of that for battery storage. Um, you know, you look at a periodic table, uh, you have hydrogen, helium, and then lithium. It's the lightest metal, holds the highest charge. Um, so it's it, that's not going to change in the near term. I agree with you 100. percent How does the transition to clean energy in Europe? compared to what we are seeing in North America? You know, that's a great question. I, you know, I'm a North American and, and, you know, we like to think that we're the center of the universe and that, you know, the clean energy push is, is, uh, is the center of the universe here in, in uh, North America. But the reality is, is that it's in full swing in Europe and it's, it's probably further ahead. They have uh, over 35 battery factories or gigafactories uh, um, under construction, under permitting uh, or, or um, completed. And those all have large multinational uh, companies attached to them. And the Europe's uh, recently come out and said they want to source 30% of their um, clean their critical minerals, which would include lithium, from the EU area. And there's just not a lot of places to do that. 
it's great to see that all this opportunity is happening in Europe. Who are some of your comparables, especially the mine being built right next to you? And how large is that project? So that, that project that's being built next to us is uh, they're spending uh, 600 million euro. Uh, it's going to be uh, uh, 15,000 tons per annum for 16 years. Um, so it's, it's going to be a pretty substantial mine. Um, and, um, and the company that owns that, Sabanye, is, is traded on the New York Stock Exchange, and it's a, a large company. So, um, you know, I wouldn't call them a comparable at this point, but I would say that our geology looks similar. Uh, so we're hoping for a similar type of deposit. They have about 17 million tons. Wow, that sounds like an amazing opportunity for investors to get in. Why do you feel you're undervalued at a 10 million market cap, which is essentially a baby market cap? Yeah, I mean, at 10 million with 3 million in the bank, you have a $7 million enterprise value. Uh, you know, we have comparables that are, are uh, um, you know, in the, anywhere from 140 million to 500 million. Uh, and, you know, we have a tight share structure. So I think as, as we get the story out, we do more interviews like this. I think it'll be natural that the market would move, move higher. I agree 100% with you. And what are upcoming catalysts for your company's growth? Um, you know, the results from this exploration program is a big one. Uh, and then the permits uh, in Q, hopefully Q1. And then ultimately we'll be moving forward with a drill program uh, sometime in the uh, first half of next year. So uh, I think those are all uh, really, really explosive catalysts. We love catalysts here at Rich TV Live. And how do American investors find your U.S. listing and what is your Canadian listing? Uh, well, we're listed on the TSX uh, Venture Exchange under the symbol FIN, FIN. Um, so that would be uh, our main listing. And then we're also listed on the QB under the symbol EUENF uh, for U.S. investors. We also got it listed right here for everyone to see. And are you looking to get acquired, like you mentioned in the past with previous projects, in the future as an exit or no? I think you've seen the majority of the lithium projects get bought out, like the two that I mentioned previously, and there's been a number of other ones. And I don't think we're any different. I mean, some of them, you know, you do take through to, to uh, from development to building, and that does happen. But, uh, you know, I think for juniors, um, you know, it's always a good idea if they can bring in a, a multinational large company as either a partner or a potential takeout. Um, that's, uh, you know, takes off some of the heavy lifting. Thank you for watching the Rich TV Live podcast. I'm your host, Richard D'Souza, here with the CEO of European Energy Metals Corp., Jeremy Poirier. Now, I must remind you that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. So please do your due diligence and do your research whenever you're looking at investing into companies that we're featuring. In saying that, I do believe this is a company which we've talked about with a very, very small market cap, a baby market cap, which based on what Jeremy has told us, has $3 million in the bank and a tight share structure. So our Rich TV Live community Take a look at this company, put it on your radar and put it on your watch list. The symbol in Canada, F-I-N, in America, E-U-E-M-F. We believe that they are undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed, and everyone should put them on their radar and on their watch list. Jeremy, thank you for joining us today. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. And for those of you that are not winning, you're probably not watching, we bring you the winners, CEO interviews, breaking news, trending topics, and we bring it to you first. Thank you for watching the Rich TV Live podcast. I'm Richard D'Souza saying have a nice day. We'll see you soon.